Howdy. Tonight I wanted to walk y'all through how to set up Aeon's End before I record my first mission of it. And when I go over these setup rules, I'm not going to really be going over how the game works. I'm just going to be going over how we set it up. And I've already pulled most of the cards I'm going to need for setup, um, except for the cards that are randomly generated that I'll have to dig through the box for to try to speed this up a little bit. Alright, let's get started. The first thing we do is set up our character. So we pick a character, uh, or a player mat, and let's go ahead and zoom in, some, zoom in some here. There's a player number, so each player gets a different number. There is life, this is how much health your character has. We have a starting hand, these are what cards start in your hand. I get one emerald shard, three crystals, and one spark. My starting deck is three crystals and two sparks. In most games you would shuffle this, but in this game you don't. Uh, you start left to right building the top of the deck first. So the top of the deck is 3x crystals and the bottom of the deck is 2x sparks. Then finally we have an ability. Activate during any player's main phase. That player may return up to three spells in their discard to their hand. That player may prep up to two spells in each of their open breaches. Now again, we're not going to worry exactly about what that means until later. The other things to note is to power up this ability it takes five charges so there's a little area on the player card for tracking how many charges you have and up here it shows you how your breaches start we have an open breach and we have one that has its little triangle on the left side so that's what we want the next one points down I'm not sure if you can see it so it the level three breach will start in this orientation and the final one opens left, so our level 4 breach will open in this direction. So this key, sets, this key tells you how to set up your breaches. We keep our deck on the left side of our card and our discarded cards on the right side. So you need somewhere to keep your character. I'm going to place my character here. Now I'm not following the, the directions for setting up exactly in order. I'm just going through, you know, my own way of setting up. So I'm going to start off by putting down my breaches. I need a level 1 breach. I need a level 2 breach that's facing this direction. I need a level 3 breach that is facing down. And I need a level 4 breach that's facing left. I'm going to be playing with only one character. One thing I love about, love about this game, it doesn't force you into playing multiple characters. You can get by totally fine just playing one breach mage. So, I'm just playing one character, and my starting number is going to be 1. Now I put my life here, and they suggest in the book that we start with a 5, and then 5 1s, so we can break it down when we need to. And it's easier to count if we do a 5 and some 1s. Because if we just put 10 little heart tokens there, it would be a little bit harder to keep track of what our current health is. And we'll break the 5 later when we need to. So. I have this little token tray. It's good to have your little your tokens organized as you play. It just makes everything faster. So I'm going to move this off to the side now. And now I'm going to keep setting up my player. So the next thing I need to do is do my starting hand. One emerald shard, three crystals, and a spark. There's actually a deck that just has starter cards, and there are a lot of them. So I need one spark, three crystals, one, two, three, and a emerald shard. And the order that you pull these doesn't really matter because these are in your hand. So I have my hand built. I'm going to go ahead and drop them right there. And now I need to build my deck. My deck is three crystals and then underneath that two sparks. So there's my two sparks. And then I have three crystals. One, two, three. The cool part about this game is there's only a little bit of shuffling. You never shuffle your player deck. It's all based on the order in which you play it and the order in which you discard it. Your deck will cycle and let's say we played everything, your deck's over here. How you cycle it is you just do that. And that's amazing because I hate having to shuffle all the time. Alright, now we move on to, we have our deck, um, our player is fully set up. Now we need to set up our enemy. So our enemy, oh, before I get to my enemy, 
In this game, you're protecting a town. It's like the last holdout of human civilization. The world's already been destroyed, and there's these magic breaches and stuff, and you're trying to protect your last holdout, which is uh, Gravehold. And it has 30 health. So you're trying to protect this town, and periodically the monster is going to attack it and reduce its health. So you need somewhere to store that dial. I'm just going to put that over here. And we need somewhere to store the enemy dial. So now we're moving on to the enemy. The first thing you're going to pull for the enemy is the correct number. Sorry, you're going to pull his dial and go ahead and get it to the correct total, 70. Then he has some extra powers. And if you want to increase the difficulty, do this. But we're not going to be increasing the difficulty. And then there's rules about how to use his special power. But we'll get to that later when we're actually playing. So I'm going to put this enemy over here because that looks like a good spot for him. Well, let's put him right down here. So he's right next to the player so he can read it, all his information. Maybe his enemy cards as he draws them, like powers that are in play, I'll put up here. All right, to set him up, each enemy has their own special cards. They have nine of them usually. They're three level one cards. Let's see, you can't really see it. There you, there you go. There's a one here. Three level ones, three level twos, and three level three cards. This is the enemy's AI deck. I'm just sorting them here for now. I think I grabbed a one that shouldn't have went there. So you have to sort them by number. And then for this enemy, you're like, oh my gosh, there's like a whole lot of zeros. Zero cards have special rules for enemy. If there's ever a zero card, they'll function in some interesting way. These deck, these zero cards perform a strike deck. Sometimes this monster is going to do an attack, and you'll randomly pull one from this deck and then reshuffle it. So anytime he has to strike, he'll do one of these six cards. So he needs a strike deck. I'm going to put a strike deck right here. I'm going to move this over a little bit so we can have room for the enemy's discard and we also need to form the enemy deck and how we form the enemy deck is we take his nine cards three ones three twos three threes and we add some basic enemy cards so we go here and we look at what uh, we look at how many players we have we have one breach mage so we need one additional tier one card three additional tier two cards, and seven tier three cards. So then we go over to this. I have these already pulled. This is the deck of basic abilities that, enemy, that any nemesis could get. So first we pull all of our level ones, our level twos, and our level threes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. For every tier, we always get three level sorry seven tier threes so this gets put into the stack with the threes then it wants us to pull three tier twos so i'm just going to take these shuffle them a little bit and then randomly pull so let's pull oh let's turn these over so i don't see which ones i randomly pull that one that one and that one for tier one i randomly pull one tier one card if you have more players, they need each phase to last longer because you'll build up slower. But there's less cards if you're playing just one Breach Mage because you're going to power your character up faster being a deck builder. And let's go with this one. So the next thing we have to do is build our enemy deck. How we build our enemy deck is we take the level 3s, we shuffle them together. They're going to be the bottom of the enemy deck because the, as, as the enemy powers up, he's going to get to his stronger abilities. So the threes go on bottom. The twos go on top of the threes because they're a little bit weaker than level three abilities, but stronger than level one abilities. Then we put the enemy's level one abilities. And he doesn't have very many level one abilities because we're playing one breach mage, so the game wants him to power up really fast. All of these go to the left of this monster, we'll form his discard right here. He also has some tokens that are going to come up as we play, but we'll get to that later when we're actually playing the game. 
So our enemy is set up, our player is set up. The final thing we have to do is set up the draw piles for our drafting. And how we do that, let me double check how many we get of each. So draw phase, exhausted, flipping, nexus setup, supply setup. Three gems, two relics, four spells. So we have these randomizers. So each game you have random draw piles, which kind of make the game interesting. So what we need to do is we need to pull, let's see, three gems. So I'm mix these up real quick, and I'm going to pull three gems. One, two, three. Those are my gems. Now we need to pull two relics. Yeah, these are my relics. These cards aren't actually used in the game, these randomizer cards. These are just to help you randomly pick which items you're going to use. And then we'll go grab these from our box in a minute. Don't know how well the spells have been shuffled. Um, but I think we're ready. And now we need four of these guys. One, two, three, four. So th this is all the junk we need. I'm going to start by going and grabbing all my spells. So I need to draft stuff. I'm going to put my draft area. Normally they do it in a little box grid, but I don't know that I'm going to have enough room for that. So I'm going to kind of line them up over here. So let's go pull our spells. Looks like we have four of them. We need these four spells. So now I'm going to go grab all my spells. Huge, thick stack of spells. I need that one. Let's see. Oh, that's one of the ones I needed. So, Radiance. And what else we got? There's some Lightning. Person throwing fire. There should be more of those in here later. Um, this person doing something with their mind. This little, like, fire spitting one. We need to find more of those. Here's the person. Nope, that's a different one. There's the right one. And let's keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Another one of those. Apparently that one was out of order from the one time I played this game. Alright, we look good. We pulled our spells. The next thing we have to do is we need to go grab our relics. So it looks like those two relics. the necklace, and this. I think there might be more of those. There are. And that's it. Now we need to grab our gems. So we have these three gems. And I'm getting a little bit of glare on this side. I'm going to move my lights around, see if I can fix that before I actually play. Um, let's go to our gems. Our gems, it looks like the first one is this guy. Get a fair amount of those. We get those. And those. The randomizers go away. All they're used for is figuring out what you plan to put on the board. So again, usually this is done in a nine by not sorry, a three by three grid, but right now my camera is not fitting enough. So I'm gonna go with just putting them out where y'all can see them. And I'll move my character back some. That way I, when I'm casting spells that end up up here, we don't get confused. Okay, so this didn't work super well, so let's see if I can shuffle things around and find a home for all these guys. I'll put my discard of my enemy somewhere else so that I can get all this stuff on the camera. And I think we can put them all over here.
So some of the sometimes this takes a little bit of finagling to figure out where you're going to put everything. A card will fit in each one of those. So I'm going to put my player here, and I don't have room for my discard of my Rageborn. So I'm going to move him up to make room for my discard. So there's how I'm going to be set up. I may rearrange this before I actually play. I'm not super happy with the layout, but our game is completely set up and we're ready for the first mission. Oh, wait, we're not ready. I forgot one thing. We have to set up the turn order deck. Usually, if you're playing with two, three, or four players, there get to be four player turns to every two enemy turns. But when you're playing solo, again, you're going to power up much faster than the individual mages in a multiplayer game. So they let you have a level, they let you have one activation for yourself, another activation for yourself, a third activation with a wild, and then two enemy activations. So you get one less activation each round when playing solo because you're going to power up so much faster than if you were playing two, three, or four mages. All right, the game is officially set once I shuffle these. So we don't want to know the turn order. We just want to play and let turns come up randomly. So we have to shuffle this a fair amount during the game. Most other things do not get shuffled. I'll go ahead and drop this somewhere that's not going to be in the way, right there. And we are ready to play. All right, thank you all for watching the setup.